Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm Adam, of course, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about movie sensitivity, how people watch films, how they react to film criticism, and why we have a problem on our hands in some instances. <laughs> I myself, of course, love movies. I talk about them all the time. I do the podcast every Monday. Plus, I do live streams on my channel, Adam Does Movies, every Tuesday and Friday. And then on top of that, I go out and see every new movie that comes out on a Thursday night, plus I review the movie and even go back and talk about older films. I live and breathe this stuff. This is my church. I worship at the altar of film. Maybe not that over the top, of course. That No one should have an unhealthy obsession with anything. And I know I just painted a picture like I do, but I can assure you, I'm also into video games. I also like sports. I also have kids who I do a lot of stuff with and I have a wife um, so there's plenty of things rounding me out as a well-adjusted individual some people I can't say the same for in this space or people that just go out and see a movie and feel like they have the need to make things personal I'm watching this video on as I'm recording it, I have the video version and my shirt just keeps like it doesn't know what it's doing it just wants to push me away from it it's bizarre anyway let me, let me focus. So I really wanted to go over this because lately when I've been posting reviews, these kind of out of theater reviews that are less than 60 seconds for YouTube and TikTok shorts and Instagram reels or whatever the hell they're called, I will just quickly leave the movie and I will bring up my phone and I'll give you a few thoughts about what you can expect, spoiler free. I'll say like, hey, I really enjoyed this movie because of A, B, and C, or hey, this kind of worked, here's some things to look out for that didn't. And that's it. And I, I understand that these types of videos go out to people all over the place, not just the subscribers on my channel. And that's the idea, you wanna reach more people with these. But when you reach more people, you bring in a lot of douchebags. You bring in a lot of people that don't know you or your content, or maybe they saw the movie themselves, and now they feel personally attacked by your opinion which is bizarre. I've had a couple lately where I just scratch my head and wonder why, what, what, at what end does this serve? So here's an example. I saw Fast and the Furious 10 a month or so back. I did the outside the theater review, got, I don't know, 40 or 50,000 views on some of the different platforms. And the comments on, I think it was TikTok, probably TikTok and YouTube, were just vicious. Just going off about how I'm not a fan, I never liked Fast and the Furious, and all this, they just made all these assumptions. And the, the, the criticism I gave was so top level, so obvious, that it just makes me think, really, this is what you're worked up about? I said obvious things. So what I said when I walked out of the movie was, hey, Fast and the Furious 10, it's just as dumb, it's just as family as the other ones, if you loved these movies up until 10, you're going to like this one. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. However, if you're like me and it's lost you along the way, this one's not going to pull you back. That's, I mean, obviously not verbatim, but that's pretty close to what I said. And I also said there's lots of action, lots of explosions, etc. Giving people a picture of what they can understand when they go into the film, if they're on the fence about seeing it, I don't see how that was insulting. I don't see how, I mean... I mean, I guess it's insulting if you think Fast and the Furious is Shakespeare, if you think that it's Citizen Kane levels of writing, but I have to imagine even the people that truly enjoy these flicks know they're dumb as shit, right? They know that the script is, is like AI generated at this point. There, there's no deep acting. There's no profound reveals in these movies. People come back from the dead from like Fast and the Furious 5. They're nonsensical, and it's okay if you like nonsense. I like nonsense once in a while, too, if it works. But no, they were just personally attacked by this tame little criticism, laying down facts. Adam, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. People don't listen to this guy. It's an amazing movie. He's an idiot. He doesn't, he's just a hater. He's a shill. He has an agenda. Like I, They just throw things out. 
without even giving the slightest amount of thought to what they're even saying. Yeah, Fast and the Furious, it's, it's dumb, but you can still enjoy dumb. I mean, Larry the Cable Guy was the thing at one point, so Polly Shore was the thing at one point. We can enjoy dumb things, that's okay. Another recent example was The Blackening. Uh, I didn't actually see a trailer for this movie. My wife said, uh, Lindsay, she said, Adam, you should go watch this movie. It's getting some good buzz. The trailer is really funny looking. You'll probably enjoy it. And so I said, all right, well, uh, pre predominantly black cast. Let's show some support, right? Let's, let's, it's a brand new movie. Let's give it, let's give it some bucks. So I go out and see it. It doesn't really work for me at all. Some of the jokes landed. Some of them were complete misses and it was the tone that bothered me. It wasn't that I didn't, but we'll get to that. We'll get back to it. So anyway, I leave the theater. I say, hey, I saw the blackening and it was okay. Not, the, not my favorite. This is one you could probably just watch at home on Netflix. It looked cheap. The dialogue was very stilted and uh, it didn't feel natural. And I was just giving people things to expect when going to the movie. This one I was put on blast over and I can't. I guess I, I wasn't expecting this criticism to come up as much as it did. It wasn't, you're a racist. That one I was expecting. I think I was only called that once. The one thing I was told over and over and over again was, you just didn't get the movie. Or, don't listen to this dude, he's white, this movie's not for him. He doesn't understand the culture. He doesn't understand this or that. It's, it's a lot of I don't understand anything mentality. Because I didn't think the movie was as great as this person did. So therefore... I didn't get it. I, I just watched a movie the other night with my wife. I, 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 it was the Cheeto movie. Red, Flaming Hot Cheetos or whatever. The corporate movie about a Hispanic worker that's a janitor that comes up with a new flavor that saves the Frito-Lay company or at least brings them back into, you know, full capacity again, saves a bunch of jobs. I enjoyed that movie. I didn't think it was anything amazing, but it was solid. And it was about a Hispanic family. I barely know any Hispanic families. <laughs> so my neighbor's Hispanic, but I don't, I haven't been to any sort of, you know, events or I don't know much of their culture or their history, yet I still enjoyed this film. So the whole idea that I couldn't enjoy the blackening because I didn't know the lingo or I wasn't up to date on all the historical references or don't realize or I don't understand how they speak behind closed doors is absolute bullshit. A movie shouldn't be just so segregated to one culture or to one type of person that it alienates everyone else from liking it. And I don't think that's at all what happened here. In fact, the blackening, the black jokes, the humor that, that were at the expense of white people, that was all funny. I enjoyed that. I didn't get all butter when they said like, oh, you're acting white. I wasn't crying and clutching my pearls. That was fair game. Jim Crow Monopoly, that was funny. There was good stuff when they were playing the game. What I didn't think worked was how they discussed things with each other. The topics that would come up felt unnatural. It didn't feel organic to the movie. It just sounded preachy and preachy and preachy like it was two college campus kids having a discussion back and forth in a debate format it didn't feel like friends hanging out and actually having natural conversation now i was told this is how the black community talks and if that is the case i feel very sad for those individuals that think their entire life needs to revolve around just arguing who uh, who's the blackest in the group or who's the whitest in the group i don't believe that's the case but again, I grew up in uh, Minnesota in the suburbs. So seeing a black person in that area was like finding a unicorn. It just wasn't something that happened very often. Um, that said, the dialogue being a little stiff and on the nose was just one of the many critiques I gave in that short little span of 60 seconds. I, had, I did have a full review too, but I'm speaking to this because this is the one that triggered people. I also said the movie looked cheap. Whether it's intentional or otherwise, to harken back to the old school black comedies and older films, it doesn't matter. It didn't look good. It wasn't a good looking film. 
and you can make an old school retro style of flick, but still modernize it in a way that's pleasing on the eyes. This one wasn't. It didn't have an interesting location. It didn't have uh, an interesting reveal. The deaths were all tame as crap. So I said exactly that. It's a pretty mid movie all across the board. I wouldn't rush out to see this. But yeah, that was enough to piss a lot of people off and say, don't listen to this guy. It's not for him. And then where do we go from there? When you have that kind of outlook, I then am supposed to turn around and say, well, I hope you're not going to 90% of the other movies that are made in Hollywood because they're not for you because they're predominantly white people. That is not a healthy place to be or a true place. Movies should be accessible to everyone, but they can also have nuance and they can also have deeper meaning for individual groups or individual, you know, whatever. If you watch a movie about uh, a hockey team, for instance, like the Mighty Ducks or something cheesy like that, there is going to be deeper meaning for someone that plays hockey and understands how the rules of the game work. This is a weird example to give, but I think you see where I'm getting at with it. <laughs> or books. Books is a great one. So the Harry Potter movies, I love them. I didn't read the books ahead of time. And I still really like the movies. After reading the books, the movies even felt better. They had more meaning. They felt more special to me because I had that deeper connection with the characters and the material. Someone that hadn't seen or someone that's watched the movie but has never read the books, they're going to be missing that little bit extra. But that doesn't make the movie bad, and it doesn't mean the person didn't understand it or appreciate it for what it was. A good movie is able to tell a story without having to have all these little extra pieces of homework for the viewer. At least that's, that's how I feel about it. So yeah, the, the movie wasn't for you. That's a big one I've been seeing lately. Or you didn't understand the movie. That's the other one. It's rare, I think, when most people don't understand a film. Unless it's a Christopher Nolan head trippy thing or something like Mulholland Drive that's more experimental and artsy, it's pretty much on the nose 90% of the time. So saying you didn't understand it, you didn't understand Thor, Love and Thunder, <laughs> that's not going to hold any weight to it. It's a, it's a pathetic cop-out to an actual criticism. Come at me and say, hey, you're wrong, and here's the reasons why. That's not often how the conversation goes, though. The dialogue is so stupid in comparison that it's we're left with things like, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't understand anything. And that's where we're at. It's an extreme absolute position, and there's nothing you can say to it. The other one that I've brought up before on my channel, this is my favorite of them. Why don't you make the movie then, if you're such an expert? Why don't you do it? <laughs> I, I love this one so much. Yeah, okay. Let, let's, let's really unpack what you just said there. Why don't you make Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? A film that has a $200 million budget or something ridiculous like that? All right, yeah. Let's get that all workshopped out then. Why don't you get me those funds and get me the studios, and get me the actors, and get me everything I need, and we'll really, we'll really game this out. What a dumb fucking thing to use as a criticism. Why don't you make the movie then, if you're such an expert? Do, should I say that to you? Anytime you have a hard time appreciating something, maybe you go to a restaurant, and you order food, and it's not very good tasting, and you say, oh, this is gross. Should I turn to you, because I'm for some reason there, along, along for the journey, and say, why don't you make the meal if you're such an expert? Why don't you do it? No, people don't talk like that because it's asinine. This book sucked. Oh, well, why don't you write the book then if you're such an expert? You see how this doesn't hold any water at all? It's, it's such a bad faith way to fight with someone or argue or have a dispute. When you use an extreme position, you're going to get extreme response from me. And it's typically, why don't you go fuck yourself? I type that and then I hold back, hitting enter every single time. I have to show restraint. I have to rise above that petty. I should really just not read any of this. That's the healthiest thing to do is not read any of the comments. <laughs> but, but there's that part of me that's just, I just hate myself. I have to do it. But no, I refrain from ever telling people to take a hike or to, you know, jump off a bridge or do anything like that because 
that that's what they're looking for. They're looking to ruffle feathers. They're looking to rile me up or other people up by the toxic comments that they give. And they have to understand, or I hope they understand that what they're saying is complete Looney Tunes. It's ludicrous. Why don't you go make the movie expert? Yeah, why don't you go make the three course meal, the four course meal that you're complaining about? And there is appreciation, there is respect. And that's the thing that seems to be, people seem to be uh, not grasping with film criticism. Because I see so many movies, and plenty of people in my audience do as well, we do have, we, we have a knack for knowing what works and what doesn't. Now, what works for us and others doesn't necessarily line up every time. And you can see that from the critic and uh, the review score, which I'm going to be talking about next week on the podcast. I'm going to be going over why people don't trust movie critics like they used to. Um, but for the time being on this conversation, there's a rubric I use when I, when I watch movies. And it's not like I'm there to analyze. My first job is to just go to the movie and have a good time. And try to see where the film's coming from. See if I'm engaged at the end of it. If it's working, if it's firing, or if it's just kind of towing the line or terrible. And then I try my best to give a, a reaction and a review that I think fits the quality of the film. Not even necessarily my own personal beefs or issues with it, but like a well-rounded review. So, hey, I didn't like this because X, but... However, I can see someone liking it because of Y or Z. And I also like this part of it, so it kind of cancels out. You know what I'm saying? It's not just that this is the worst movie in the world every time. This is the greatest movie in the world every time, unless I'm using it as a joke, in which case I'll make that clear. But there's this personal attachment that they, people feel so offended when you say that something sucks. And you give actual reasons why you believe that. It's just in one ear and out the other to them. It's all they hear is, you think what I like sucks? So you think I suck? You think I have bad taste? How dare you, sir? How dare you? My, my real job is uh, I'm a front end developer and web designer. Everybody has opinions on everything. We have experts in the field for a reason. People that have an eye for things, people that have an ear for things, people have a hand at design for things. And so I do visual design for websites, for apps, things like that. And every single time I put out a design, there's a comment or a critique, whether it's in-house or, or from someone outside, a third party or the, the client that we're working for might say, I don't like that color. I don't like how this works. And then it's my job to both listen and also push back and say the reasons why I made the decision I made. And that's the piece that's missing online. I don't, I don't foresee any of these people saying the stuff they say online to my face. Like, hey, you suck. This movie was amazing. And then they walk away. <laughs> There's probably some that do. But for the most part, it's a lot more civil. And so when I get a critique about a design, hey, this doesn't work. Why did you think this would? I will tell them, well, the reason I put this here is because the eye reads from right to left. So I wanted to lead them to this area so that they could make a decision about how to proceed next on this website. And it's the same way I approach movie reviews. Yeah, I didn't like this movie because the way it started and the way it ended did not line up well for me. The tone of the movie did not match from where it started. Or the acting felt disingenuous. It didn't feel... It didn't feel intact all the way through. It felt, you know, disconnected from the plot. And that's the kind of stuff that I look for. And for most people that only see a couple movies a year, that's going to trigger them. Because The Blackening, or Fast and the Furious 10, or Ant-Man and the Wasp, that was one of three movies they saw in theaters. And so they had a great time. They spent like 30 or 40 bucks to go to this movie with a couple of their kids. 50 bucks, 60 bucks, this shit's expensive now. So they are not gonna go into this movie feeling like they wasted their money and their time. And they're gonna let the person have it online who's giving them these criticisms. The other thing that I, the last thing that I think is so funny is <laughs> when I post one of these shorter reviews and they do show up, 
on a person's phone or on their computer and they're, you know, they're quickly swiping through them and they stop on mine where I'm reviewing the blackening, for instance. And I say, I didn't care for the movie that much. They then put in the comments, don't listen to this jackass or this, this movie wasn't for this guy. I didn't ask you to watch this review. I could just as well say this review wasn't for you. And my criticism would be far more correct because this person didn't actually want to hear what someone else had to say about the movie. They just wanted to hear, this movie was great. I loved it. It's the funniest comedy of 2023. And I didn't say that. So they got mad and they let me have it. But why not just piss off? Why not just swipe past and be like, oh, yeah, this guy doesn't agree. I don't care to hear from him. This movie wasn't for him. Keep it in your head. I, 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 I don't get it. I truly don't. But I also don't comment on things online in a negative manner. I, I usually don't comment at all. And if I do, it's, hey, this was great, or keep it up, or this movie looks promising, or this movie looks bad. If, if it's a bad movie trailer, I might once in a while say that. Usually I don't. But I don't directly go to the director and say, hey, your movie sucks. You shouldn't make movies anymore. <laughs> you don't understand how to make movies. That's insane. And I know a lot of people do that too. That's what Twitter is for, right? To harass celebrities and actors and, and, and directors. It's, it's just freaking weird. We live in a weird world. Anyway, that, that's the thought that came to me this week. Uh, movies are coming out. People see them. And then they, for some reason, take everything personally when there's a different opinion about them. Uh, I'd love to know if you've run into this in your real world. I know the online world has become almost as real as everything else now. So maybe you live online, in which case you probably have come across this. Have you gotten debates with people about said movies and it felt like it turned into a more personal attack than anything else? If you're on YouTube, these go live Monday night. So please join me there live and we can talk about this in the chat, or you can put a comment in the comment underneath the video. Let me know some of your experiences. This goes up earlier on Spotify and Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called, at 9 a.m. So you get a little earlier on, on the uh, audio side of things, but then you get to see my, my beautiful face with this Jurassic Park shirt that's ill-fitting now. It doesn't, doesn't work at all. Probably gonna have to lose it and get a new one. Anyway, yeah, that's the, that's the concept. That's the idea. Let me know your thoughts. Please share the podcast around. It's still in its infancy. We're only nine or 10 episodes deep. So we got a long way to go. Hopefully you're enjoying it. And uh, I, will, I will catch you next time. Take care.